Hi, welcome back to the channel. This video is the next in a series documenting the construction of an extension. In the last video, we saw the external brickwork was completed. And in today's video, we'll have a look at the internal block work that was completed. And we will take a trip all the way through to the installation of the steel beam, which is coming tomorrow. Please give us a thumbs up and like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and switch on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. So here we are looking at the house from the rear and you can see that the wall for the original extension with the window and the doors is still in place at this point. There's a variety of things to note here which we'll run through but the first and most obvious one is that we've now installed the lintel above the space where we're going to have the sliding doors. Originally we were going to put bifold doors but the house owner has now decided that they would prefer sliding doors. So that's in place ready for us to brick on top of it but if we step and have a look at the block work itself. As we mentioned in the last video block work is much cheaper to complete than brickwork. The blocks are bigger, they're lighter, they cover more space and they're easier to construct. So we put block work on the inside and as you can see we've got insulation between the block work and the brickwork and that's a requirement of building regs but also is a requirement if it's your house because you want to have as much insulation as possible. You want to keep the heat that you're generating internally inside the property. So this is basically cavity wall insulation. So you've got a cavity between the two walls and we've now insulated it. And if we have a quick look at the insulation itself, this is how it comes in a roll. It's 100 mil thick, it's earth wall, environmentally friendly, really flexible. So jumping back into site, we can see here that we've removed all of the previous patio. So the ground floor level is now down below the actual finished floor level that we will have inside the extension once it's completed. So having a look at the wall, you can see that it's all been nicely pointed, all fitted in, all in place. So that's now ready for some plasterboard and plastering in the future. We haven't insulated between the two sets of bricks that are going underneath the patio doors at this stage because we're going to be doing more work in there later. And if you look over on this wall, similar thing, all the blocks now in place. You can see the lift on the left hand side there that we put in. And down here you can see the damp proof membrane that we've lapped down into the space beneath the patio. So that's going to keep everything nice and dry and keep all the water out. Looking back towards the house, you can see that we've now removed the original extension rear wall. So this is now showing you the full length of this extension. So this is the full six meters. So previously the old extension was three meters and we've added on an additional three meters of length. Now we've removed that wall we've got the full six meters. So we're starting to see the full size of this extension as it will be finished. So if you look up, you can see that we've prepared or we've started preparing the roof structure for the steel beam. So we're going to put a steel beam across the top here, which will sit on top of the block walls. And then we will fix the two sets of rafters into that steel beam on either side to give that roof the full support. So if you remember from the drawings, we're installing roof lights on either side of the steel beam. So we'll have a large roof light in that section you're looking at there, which is the old extension. And we'll also have a, have a large roof light above the new three meters of extension. But you can see here that everything's now been tied in. So the walls on either side are at the same level. Once we've got the roof structure in place, we'll now be able to focus on the internal fit out. So we will do the first fix and then move on to the second fix. So it's starting to take shape, but I just want to draw your attention to the amount of disruption. So we get asked a lot through this channel as to whether or not people should stay in their house if they're having major building work done and whether or not it will disrupt family life. But you can see here, previously the back section of this was their extension and they had, they've got their boiler in there, you can see it on the wall on the right hand side and there's a radiator in there. And if you look now at the amount of disruption, basically we've removed that back wall so the house is now open to the elements. And thankfully at the moment the weather's good so you can see out nice clear blue sky. But if it was raining and windy, this would 
basically have a massive impact on the inside of the house. So we've got to now get this watertight enclosed up as soon as possible. You can see the boiler on the left hand side there, that's still the boiler for the house so we need to keep that working for the guys to have hot water and heating. But if you look here, we've had to remove all of the floor in this extension. You saw in the previous video we dug up a large section of the floor to put in the new drainage rodding access, so that's now going to be sorted out. So the next job here on site is to build the blockwork and the brickwork above where the sliding doors are going. So where the lintel is sitting across the back there, you can see there's nothing on it at this point. So if we now move forward, we brought the lift and the lift is basically a technical name for this platform that we've got here for the brick layer to be able to stand on to access that space above the gap. So that lintel is basically an eye shaped metal beam that is a steel beam, which we will then put bricks on the outside of so that it matches the brickwork on the outside of the property and blocks to match the block wall we've got internally. So if we look now a bit later on, you can see the block work has now been completed. So all the way across the top of that gap, the blocks have been built on top of the lintel. So that's the final structure. Obviously we'll plaster it before it's completely finished. And you can also see there are some bricks sitting on top of the blocks and they're the bricks that will be applied to the outside of that structure to match the brickwork on the external walls. Jumping up from a different angle, we're now starting to prepare the roof for the arrival of the steel beam. So this is the old extension roof. You can see that we've stripped back the old covering so the ply board is now visible and what we're going to do is prepare all of these timbers so all the ceiling joists that are in place from the old extension we need to make sure that they're good enough to be able to be used in the new extension roof and that everything's level and that we don't have any issues with regards to uh, the roof potentially holding water in the future so we need to make sure it looks like one perfect continuous roof so here we are on site just doing some of that work so we've got to remove all the old nails and anything else that's been fitted into these timber joists that all needs to be taken out and these need to be perfectly straight and smooth so that we've got a perfect roof. If you think about what's going to happen here, the steel beam will be inserted from wall to wall so it'll go across the front of all of these joists and because it's an I-beam those joists will be fitted into it so that it fits in snugly on both sides. So the steel beam will spread the load of the weight of the roof and will basically have joists on either side of it. So we'll put new joists in on the new extension part of it, but we've got to fit these old joists into the steel beam once it arrives. And from a construction point of view, it would actually be easier to install a completely new roof because that would mean that we made sure that everything was completely level, we had the right fall on the roof and that we know exactly what we're working with because all of the timbers would be brand new. The homeowner obviously wanted to keep the cost down and also this makes it much quicker because we've got half the roof already in place so we can get to a watertight structure much quicker from here than we would be able to if we were doing the full six meter roof from scratch. So that's why we're working with the old roof, but it does mean we need to check on the levels and that everything is perfect before we put the new covering on. So everything's ready. It's now time to put the steel in place. So this is the truck that brought the steel. It's got a, a winch lift crane on the side of it, you can see there. And this is the steel itself. So it's about five meters long. It's not particularly heavy. You can see it's relatively thin. So it's a four man lift, we think, and we're gonna to have to carry this all the way through the house. So it's a case of literally picking it up, having four people uh, all the way across the whole beam and then just carrying it through. So we're just feeding it here through the living room window and then if we cut to the inside, we're literally going to have to just carry this through to the back of the extension. So we're dealing with the usual health and safety issues, but in addition to that, we're also having to be careful because this is the homeowner's living room and kitchen. So we want to make sure we don't accidentally damage any of the existing property. But this is just a case of carrying this through. We'll then just rest it on the lift here. So we've got the platform in place just to be able to position where we're going to put the steel. And then it's a case of feeding it into position. So as I mentioned before, we've got the joists that we've been preparing from the original extension roof. 
they need to be fitted into one side so you can see the eye beam so if you look at the beam you can see that it's got a flat piece on the top and then uh, a vertical section and then another flat piece at the bottom so the joists will fit snugly into that section so they will fit in nicely on both sides so we'll fit that tight against the existing roof structure and then what we will do is put some new timbers in place that will go from the beam to the lintel that we've just installed at the back of the extension so it's just a case of lifting this up as we said before it's not particularly heavy so it's relatively easy we don't need any mechanical equipment sometimes you would have a winch on site or if it was a really big steel you may have to get it craned in over the top of the house but we don't need to do any of that in this situation because it's relatively light this beam so it's pretty easy to manhandle which is what we're doing here and then it's literally just a case of putting it in situ so it's we've got a couple of we prepared the wall for where it's going and then it's just a case of maneuvering this into position so relatively straightforward and then what we'll need to do is some timber work to make sure that all of these joists that are existing from the old roof fit snugly into that position so this is the last job for today once we've got this in place we'll be able to then start working on the new roof structure for the new extension roof so quite an exciting part of the build not too far away from being watertight once we get to that stage so relatively straightforward to fit this steel beam everything is prepped all going in nicely so hopefully this should be quite straightforward to get in and all the heavy lifting has been done now so it's literally just a case of fiddling about to make sure that it fits tightly so if we have a look at it from the other angle you can see here easily now how the joists fit in to the i-beam so you can see in the central section if you look just close to where this pipe is where the guy's standing we've cut out the top section of the beam so you can see where he's standing in the one next to it we've cut a little notch into that and that's just making sure that it's really tight fitting into the i-beam itself because this is basically the support for the whole of the roof so this i-beam here will keep that end of the roof stable make sure there's no movement and then we'll just need to fit in the new joists afterwards into the other side as well thank you for watching please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already and we'll see you on the next video